Dear colleagues, I'm Christoph Diener from the Medical Faculty of the University of Duisburg-Essen in Germany. And today I would like to tell you what happened in neurology in January 2023. I would like to start with headache. You are all aware that we have many, many new studies for the prevention of migraine, but we have almost no studies for the treatment of tension type headache, and in particular studies with non-drug treatment. A working group in Göttingen in Germany did a study in people with uh, frequent episodic and chronic tension type headache and randomized them into four groups. The first group received classical Chinese acupuncture for three months. The second group received physical therapy and exercise one hour per week for 12 weeks. The third week, the third group had a combination of acupuncture and exercise. And the last group uh, had, was a control group uh, with standard of care. And they looked after six and 12 months at the outcome parameters of tension type headache. Now, a year ago, they published that the intensity of tension type headache was reduced by active therapy, but not the frequency. And in this year in Cephalalgia, they published the outcome for the endpoints, depression, anxiety, and quality of life. And uh, acupuncture and exercise and the combination improved depression, anxiety, and improved quality of life. And this shows that non-medical treatment is effective in people with frequent episodic and chronic tension type headache. The next study was published in Headache, and it deals with headache following COVID-19 infection. This is a, a, a review of published studies. It, more than 50% of people with COVID-19 develop headache. Uh, it's more frequent in young patients and in people with uh, pre-existing primary headaches like migraine and tension type headache. The prognosis is usually good, but some patients develop new daily persistent headache, which is a major problem because we don't know yet how to treat this. And we would desperately need studies how to treat uh, this new daily persistent headache after COVID-19 infection. The next study also deals with COVID-19. We have conflicting results from a number of studies that possibly serotonin reuptake inhibitors might be effective in people with mild COVID infection. And this hypothesis was tested in a study in Brazil published in JAMA. So these patients, and there were 1,288 with mild COVID-19 infection as outpatients also received 50 milligrams of fluvoxamine twice daily for 10 days of placebo, and there was no benefit of the treatment of any outcome. The next study was published in the European Heart Journal, and it deals with the question whether effective antihypertensive treatment in the elderly can prevent dementia. This is a meta-analysis of five placebo-controlled trials with more than 28,000 patients, and the meta-analysis clearly shows that treating hypertension in elderly patients prevents dementia. Now, the benefit is, is higher if the blood pressure is lowered in a larger amount. This is also true, by the way, for very old patients. So there is no negative impact of lowering blood pressure in this population. The next study was published in Stroke and deals with the question whether in people who had an intracerebral hemorrhage on antiplatelet therapy, resumption of antiplatelet therapy should be early or late. And in the Taiwanese Health Registry, this was studied in 1,584 patients. And they divided them into people where antiplatelet therapy was resumed within 30 days or after 30 days. And in one year, the rate of recurrent intracerebral hemorrhage was 3.2%, and there was no difference whether antiplatelet therapy was resumed early or late. And the final study, again, is a study on non-medical therapy. This is a meta-analysis of 19 randomized trials, which looked at the benefit of regular exercise <clears throat> in patients with Parkinson's disease and depression. And the analysis clearly showed that rigorous and moderate exercise improves depression in patients with Parkinson's disease. And this is very important because exercise not only improves the symptoms of Parkinson's disease, but also comorbid depression and has no serious adverse events or side effects. Ladies and gentlemen, six interesting studies published in January 2023. I'm Christoph Diener from the University of Duisburg-Essen. Thank you very much for listening and watching.